East down the 401 for the CH game of the week and Wellington put on a show for their hometown fans. This is the OGA today. Welcome back everyone. I'm Alex Vastjevansky heading into their showdown on national television last Wednesday with the Toronto Patriots. The Wellington Dukes really controlled their own destiny. Although slightly behind the Trenton Golden Hawks in the East Division, the Dukes had a couple of games in hand, meaning if they pick up the necessary points as the regular season winds down. They will end up as the top dogs in the East. So with that being said, the game Wednesday night on CHCH television was one they just couldn't let slip away. Game highlights now brought to you by BioSteel. BioSteel, the official isotonic beverage of the OJHL. And this game was in prime time, 8 p.m. across the country on CHCH. And the Dukes impressed the Pats. Not so much. Brutal giveaway. 427 in. Dylan Massey jumping all over it. He makes it one zip for the Dukes of Wellington. Turnovers were just killing the Pats in the first. This one's intercepted. Jake Gagnon, spin a ram a pass. Frank Petucci continues his toward play and he makes it 2 nothing for the home side. They weren't done. Noah Massey, Dylan's brother, the point shot. In it goes. His teammates beyond excited for him. Why? That's Noah's first tally of the season, if you can believe it. Uh, no let up in the second frame. Jacob Reckles, who just committed to Adrian College, bulges the twine, and it's four zip for Wellington. Finally, the Pats get on the board. Matt Dunsmore can't smother the first shot. Peter Fleming there to bang home the loose puck, and their deficit was cut to three. The Dukes were being outshot by a two to one margin, but they were clinical on their finishes. Dylan, Dylan Massey to Petucci for his second of the night. Third period, the Dukes leading 6-3. Quinn Hanna providing one of the goals of the week. Turns Tyler Bricari inside out. Beats Mario Pescia. Beautiful. 7-3 for the Dukes. They were getting it done with the body as well. Dante Jones getting taken for a ride by Ben Addison. And this is a textbook hip check. Doesn't get much more perfect than that. It was just a beating all around in this game. Wellington downs the visiting Patriots by a 7-3 count and they control their own destiny and their chase in, for the East Division title. Staying out East, Whitby and Coburg in a deadlock for third place in the division. Fury getting on the board first, Carson Whitson banging on the rebound. one nothing Fury. The Cats respond though. TJ Kufis squeezing one through the pads of Connor McKenzie and it's a 1-1 game. Riley Girard pays the price out front here but the juice is worth the squeeze as they say. He makes it 2-1 Whitby. George Crotiris equalizes and then George gets his second right there to put the Cougars ahead. 3-2. Whitby takes over in the third though. Ethan Doyle, who you're about to see more of in our 60 second spotlight, scores and then a weird one as the puck goes up over and in past Ethan Robertson. Michael Andrews gets credit for it. That's the winner. Riley Girard talked afterwards about the turning point for his team. I think being positive, just pushing each other and Mackers is on his head back there and both our goalies have been great all year and uh, we'll just keep pushing forward here. Okay, this one qualifies as possibly the biggest upset in the OJ this year. First in the West, Oakville hosting last in the North Aurora. Blake Frost gets things started with a beautiful goal for the Tigers coast to coast. Uh, Short-handed no less. 1-0 Cats. Seven minutes later, they were all scrambling on this play. Finally, Moro Bayasuto finds it and puts it home. 2-0 Aurora after 40 minutes. You knew it was just a matter of time, though, until Oakville got going. On the power play, Stephen Whittle beats Christian Filippetti. And it's 2-1. Nine minutes later, Harrison Israel is on the doorstep. Uh, money, he ties it up at two apiece. So it looked 
like this one was going to head off to overtime, but in the final minute of play, look at the snipe by Luke Reeve right there over the shoulder of Will Barber. Are you kidding me? Nobody saw this one coming. 64 points separate these two clubs in the standings, but this is why you play the game. Aurora pulls off the monster upset, taking it 3-2. OJ Commitments now brought to you by College Hockey Inc. College Hockey Inc. official partner of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And uh, Jacob Breckles, the man you just saw scoring a goal for the Wellington Dukes in the game of the week, has made his decision. And he's going to a great D3 college in the States, Adrian College. And he'll start there next fall. Congratulations. And our 60-second spotlight is brought to you by Warrior Hockey. Warrior, uh, official hard goods supplier to the OJHL. Ethan Doyle forward with the series. Last cross, here's a chance. Doyle scores! Ethan Doyle goes Reef Daddy on the llama. What I bring to the ice is hard work every shift, you know, a little bit of leadership too, and uh, I, got a, I got a bit of touch offensively too. I can score, I can put up some points too. Wearing the A means to me just being a leader, you know, every shift on the ice, not just vocal leader, but also lead with your play and uh, just set an example for all the younger guys and really everybody on the team. So it's, a, it's an honor to wear an A and uh, I take pride in wearing it. When I think about this team, I think of a hardworking young group, a uh, couple of veteran leaders on the team, a lot of skill, a lot of potential and uh, once we get things clicking, uh, we'll be a dangerous team in this league. So I'm really excited for this season. Doyle moving in, shooting, scores! Ethan Doyle. This portion of the OJ Today is brought to you by Q Caller, official safety partner of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today. You know, it's not every day you see a defenseman up near the top of the league scoring race, but for a while earlier this season, that's exactly what was going down. Trenton's Sam Duchesne was not only leading the Golden Ox in scoring, but the entire OJHL. Over the past couple of months, he's been overtaken by forwards, but he's still in a dead heat with Wellington's Quinn Hanna for the title of top scoring D-man in the OJ. So obviously, Sam has been killing it this year. If you listen to Jihawk's head coach, Peter Goulet, however, you've got to look beyond the points to see all the intangibles the veteran brings to the ice. Here's more. Duchesne now has it. Roll and fire score! That's a power play goal. And Duchesne buries it. It's 1 0 Trent. Plays like that have become a common sight in the OJHL this season. Trenton's Sam Duchesne has been scoring points at a torrid pace. Maybe not entirely unexpected for a 20 year old, except that Sam is a defenseman. Duchesne even broke the record for single season scoring by a Trenton D-man in early February, which previously stood at 52 points. For Sam, what he does out there isn't rocket science. I just play my game. I mean, there's not much to it. I mean, you know, it, hockey's pretty, pretty uh, basic once you break it down. And that's what I try and do, just break it down and play as hard as I can and, you know, keep my head up to help everybody else. Well, obviously, Sam, or up there in points, uh, he's good presence on D, older guys, experience with Major Junior and that sort of thing, so he knows what he's doing. He helps out the younger guys, and he's a great guy in the room too, keeps everything light, but he, he's disciplined too, so it's good. When you have a defenseman that you can rely on as your like main offensive guides, it makes it pretty easy for the forest to just go out there and play our game and know we have like a calming influence on the back end that's going to put up points pretty much every game. So All I can do is just play as the best I can and you know that's just defensive first and then offense comes second and I've been pretty fortunate this, this year to, uh, to be able to provide uh, you know, my offensive skill and I think that that comes with the, the players I'm playing with. I mean they're, they're smart players and, and they help me out a lot on the ice. Yeah, he's, a, he's an unbelievable leader. He's a great young man. Uh, 
you know, it's uh, people people are looking at his numbers and his stats, and he's leading the defense and scoring. And, but he brings so much more than that to our hockey team. His, his uh, commands respect in our dressing room. Just a great young man. Uh, he's good. He talks to me, asks me questions. Uh, we talk about different things. For Trenton head coach Peter Goulet, it was an easy decision to give Duchesne the captain's C this season. For him, it came down to the P word. And no, not points. I think it's his, his poise with the puck. He doesn't panic, you know, whether there's one, two, three guys bearing down on him, he doesn't have any panic. He makes the right decisions all the time. Um, you know, and you can't teach that. That's something you can have a thousand practices and show a thousand video clips, but there's just, there's, there's no teaching poise, uh, you know, for a hockey player, for whether it's a forward, a D, whoever it is, and, and Sam naturally has that, and that's why he's so successful. Duchesne spent three seasons split between the OHL and the QMJHL before coming to the OJ. It's a decision he has no regrets about and he's loving his time in Trenton. Trenton welcomed me with open arms and uh, you know I couldn't have asked for a better organization to go to. I mean they take you know they take guys in and they make a, they make you a part of their family and that's what happened with me and I'm just fortunate enough that uh, in my case it was me and since he played Major Junior, Duchesne is ineligible to go the NCAA route. No doubt though, he'll have his pick of U Sports schools before the year is out. But for now, he's focused on this season and leading Trenton to the promised land. I'd love to play CIS. I mean, it's, you know, I think it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty special. Uh, but I'm not, too, uh, I'm not thinking about it too much. I'm just trying to you know, play in the moment. And uh, you know, think about that second. And I mean, right now I'm mostly focused on on our season and winning the RBC. Back to the point, and they score a one-timer. That's Sam Duchesne, and it's four to two. The Brantford and Georgetown are fighting tooth and nail for fourth spot in the West. So this was a massive game. In the early going, it was Colton Incy stealing the show for Brantford, makes the blocker stop, and then two more huge saves right there to rob the Raiders and that seemed to fire up his boys on the rusher Wyatt Allen to Nick McHugh one zip for the 99ers Georgetown would equalize though Jaden Kadada to Eric Russell who goes roof daddy and it's a 1-1 tie and that opened the floodgates for the Raiders second frame Nolan Dan what a rookie season this guy's having. Bangs in his 22nd of the campaign, and it was 2-1. Raiders coach Scott McCrory had to be on his toes behind the bench. He was black and blue after this game. Takes the slap shot off his arm from his own team. Yeah, that stinks. He was okay, though. Leading 4-1 in the third, Eric Russell will put one past and see here. Just kind of dribbling it past the keeper. Awkward. The Raiders win the all-important battle. Picking up two points and momentarily moving ahead of Brantford in the West Division standings. And the latest CGHL national rankings came out on Monday. And Sherwood Park leads the way from the AJHL, followed by Summerside. Four OJ teams listed. The Dukes leading the way at number nine. The Blades 11. Trenton Golden Ox at 15 right now. And the Toronto Junior Canadians are currently at number 18. And just a reminder, for all the latest OJHL news, stats, and awesome stories by the feature writers, and of course, to keep up to date on the upcoming playoff matchups, be sure to head to OJHL.ca, the official league website. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Troy Hockey. Troy, the official apparel provider to the OJHL. And hey, welcome back to the OJ Today. And this is it. We are into our last weekend of regular season play now with uh, some of the playoff races going right down to the wire. And here to help break down what went down last week and what's coming up is Fedora Films' Joe Montezano. Welcome back, Joseph. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for including me in the show with a lot of mathematical uh, statistics. Statist I'm not good at yeah, I know. we got to point out, of course, this is taped earlier in the week, so there's so much stuff that's still got to happen. So, yeah, Joe did some digging for us, though, and we're going to cover that now. And it is crazy, isn't it? Uh, we're going to start with the West. Just when it looked like the Georgetown Raiders were going to wrap up fourth place after two big wins last weekend, they gave up two goals 
in the last minute and a half to Brampton, including the winner with, if, I mean, I couldn't believe it when I saw this, one second left. Uh, it's all gonna come down to this upcoming weekend and Brantford has a game in hand on them. Yeah, Brantford does have a game in hand on Georgetown. Now, Georgetown is only two points up on Brantford. So Georgetown, will, will, if, if they lose that game, they'll finish with 57 points. Brantford, wins one game of the two, they'll finish at 57 points. And let's see Markham, for some reason, wins both games, they'll finish at 57 points. Yep. There will be no playing game. <laughs> then there will be a one game playoff, that, from what I understand, between Brantford and Georgetown. Yep. So, blow your mind right there, but there's a lot of scenarios. Yeah, and Brantford and Georgetown, of course, the, the season series was even between the two of them. So yeah, one game playoff. Could possibly happen next week. It's it's going to be crazy. Uh, let's move to the North Division, though. And, you know, what a turnaround this season by the Pickering Panthers. Joe, they take first place. They'll likely have to face the winner of the Northwest crossover game, we think. Uh, we should point out, of course, though, that we are in the studio, studio here, like we said. So there's so many things that still could happen. But right now, that looks like the most likely scenario, the crossover game. What's your take on the North Division? Well, in October, we, we would have laughed our heads off saying Pickering yeah. was going to win. Now, they could be a team that could win the whole thing. They are that good. They're that stacked from front to back, especially with Bonello on the back as goalie. This weekend will determine home ice advantage between Pickering, I was checked that, sorry, uh, between Stouffville and Collingwood. That's going to be a great series. And Stouffville now is laying the body out. That should be a bruising series between those two teams. So we'll see what happens for, for that for that series. We will find out who has home ice advantage. And that could home ice advantage could determine who will win that series. And and I don't think any team wants to face Collingwood in the first round with the home crowds there. Best attendance in the OJHL this year in their first season. It's gonna be an intimidating atmosphere. Uh, let's move to the south now. Those top three spots have been determined for some time now, but Really, how about the North York Rangers, though? This was supposed to be a rebuilding year for them. Uh, even so, they now have the fourth and final playoff spot in the division. And after losing so many veterans from last year's powerhouse team, really a big accomplishment for the Rangers this year, wasn't it? It is. It's not as shocking as, as we're thinking it is because they're a well-coached team. They have probably one of the best coaches in the league. And, and then they have Eli Schiller, who's a great goalie. Um, he learned from the, one of the best in Jed Alexander. And I think that they're going to lose their first round uh, to the Canadians. But I think they'll give them a heck of a fight. It's going to be a good series. And the Canadians will have their hands full, I think. Yeah, they will. And I just wanted to point out, Cole O'Hara has been absolutely incredible over the last couple of weeks. The 17-year-old uh, who's listed on NHL Central Scouting's uh, midterm rankings and is headed to UMass next fall. He's been just amazing. Uh, let's check out the East, though. Wellington controls its own destiny heading into the final weekend anyway with a game in hand on Trenton. Uh, and that Friday night game at Duncan Memorial Arena, I wish I could be there. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And uh, Colbert and Whitby enter the weekend tied on points as well. But really, either way, you get Trenton or Wellington in the first round. So really, just pick your poison, right? What kind of question is that? You're yeah. asking me if I'm going to be bit by a Colbert or a Black Widow spider. Either <laughs> those, you know, those two teams are going to run through the first round. And unfortunately then Trenton and Wellington are going to meet up in the second round. We're going to lose a Buckland Cup favorite in the second round. It's criminal, isn't it? I know, that's a tough one. The, the only reason this weekend matters in the East is, is who's going to control home ice in the second round. Wellington or Trenton, that's going to be a heck of a series. I know we fast forwarded a bit, but do we really, unfortunately, are, are we giving uh, Coburg or Whippy a chance to beat those two teams? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the second round. That's my fault. I shouldn't, but I am. Uh... Remember some of the shockers that went down last year, though, out east. So, I mean, anything can happen. And, and you said Buckland Cup favorites, and I think the Oakville Blades have got something to say about that as well out west. But, you know, I digress. We'll get to that later on. Uh, I asked Ron Valentine before, and now I'm going to ask you. We've got about just a minute, 15 seconds here. Um, since the regular season is wrapping up, who would be your choice for the league's most valuable player? So I'm going to give you three. Okay. Now, my number one choice is Kyle Baller, second in the league in points. 
He has a 40 point lead on his teammate for the team lead. That's incredible. Like that right there, second in the league in scoring, but a 40 point lead on a teammate is, is unreal. Yeah. And my second choice would be Nathan Torquia with a 2.2 yeah. in goals against average in 42 games played. Georgetown has given up a, only 149 goals this season. And he, he he's only given up 94 of those. Yeah. 94 goals he's given up in, in 42 games. That's crazy. And my third choice, I don't think he's eligible, is Brandon Bonello. He's been huge for the resurgence for the Pickering Panthers. A 1.89 goals against and a 9.44 save percentage in 24 games. Those are my top three. And any of those will be great MVPs. And uh, all from the Northwest Conference. So, of course, those out east, if you'd like to disagree with Mr. Montezano, we've got his Twitter handle up there right now. Joe, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of flack for it, but thank you for coming on here, laying it all out there. And uh, as usual, man, great comments. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll chat with you later on. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Scotiabank. Scotiabank, the official bank of the OJHL. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today. Sunday saw a massive tilt go down in York Region as the Markham Royals hosted the Georgetown Raiders. Now, both squads were desperate for points. Markham was trying to hold on to the eighth and final playoff position in the Northwest to avoid having to play a one-game sudden-death contest to determine who was going to face the Pickering Panthers in the first round, while Georgetown was simply trying to lock down the fourth spot in the West. The stakes were high, and the finish was dramatic. Both these teams have made life harder for themselves than they needed to this year, dropping games they should have won. First period, gorgeous passing by the Royals. Tic-tac-toe, Johnny Ulickney finishing pass, Nathan Torquia. One zip for the blue and white. G-Town would reel off three straight though. First on the power play, the seeing eye point shot beats Aiden Hossein and it's tied up 1-1. They made it 2-1 and then Craig Spence plants himself on the doorstep. Won't budge, it pays off. He makes it 3-1 Georgetown. The Royals hit back in the third though. Vincent Bonayuto cuts that deficit to a single goal and I'm not sure how this one ends up in the net. Camera seems to lose it for a second. And where does it even come from? Just kind of drops down right there. All tied up 3-3. So this one goes off to overtime. Told you it was dramatic. Where it's Brendan Kennedy playing hero for the red and black attack as he bangs it home. And Georgetown picks up wins on back-to-back -back days. Unfortunately for them, they made their life a heck of a lot more difficult with their last second loss to Branton the next day. North Division foes Collingwood face Pickering on Sunday, a possible playoff preview for the second round and in the second period. Patrick DeMaio opens the scoring, tattooing the one-timer past Andrew Rose, one nothing. Three minutes later, Elijah Pilosoff uses his teammate as a decoy, fires at himself and makes it two zip. Pickering and then it's Braden Leaking going hard to the net, getting fancy with the tip, that made it three. Collingwood would add a single tally in the third. Not enough on this day, though, as the Panthers take it 3-2. The Whitby Fury visiting Trenton, and just an update. All that great work the Golden Ox did last week, the donations, the silent jersey auctions, resulted in $10,000 raised for the Trenton Memorial Hospital. Love that Crosby jersey. Great job, Golden Hawks. And they do draw first blood in this one. Adam Kim gets it past Will Craig and makes it one nothing. Second period, Whitby got one back, and then Oliver Tarr gives the Fury its first lead of the contest from uh, off angle there. In the third, with the score even again, Patrick Gone with the wicked wrister that finds daylight. So it was 3-2, Whitby, Jared Gerger, itchy trigger finger here, and the quick release beats Craig. This one then would need overtime. And the puck is Sorolis at the dot. Passes that one in front, it's kicked in! That one's off Fox and Skate. I don't think they're gonna call that one off, but that is the winner here. Well, Whitby was furious, so we obviously can't see from the one angle we've got here, but the announcers seem certain it was kicked in. 4-3, Trenton, your final. Mississauga was clinging to desperate hope. They might be able to snag a playoff spot. That hope was gone after this game. 3.38 in, Miles Perry makes it 
one zip NYR. Just 13 seconds later, Nick Beaupre though, squeezing one past James Gray to tie it up 1-1. Michael Pereira gives the Rangers back the lead as he smashes home the rebound to make it a 2-1 hockey game. But once again, Missy would respond. Luca Tellis intercepts and he's off to the races. Tickles the twine behind Mr. Gray. 2-2 after 20 minutes of play. They'd even take the lead in the second. Matthew Sopp, the future Kitchener Ranger, getting tippy with it. 3-2 Chargers and they dared to dream, but the Rangers turned that dream into a nightmare. Cole O'Hara jumps on the rebound to make it 3-3. And in the third, Noah Holm just floats a point shot in over the glove of Jack Irvine. It goes, and that proves to be the winner for North York as they take it 5-3. Let's take a look at the OJ standings brought to you by Jostens, the official ring and awards provider to the OJHL. In the West, Oakville clinches it, followed by Burlington Buffalo, but that 4-5 between Georgetown and Brantford is going to be fascinating to watch. In the North, it's Pickering on top, but Collingwood's Stouffville and Markham jockeying for position. Markham just hoping to hold on to fourth. In the South, it's set in stone. One, two, three, four, the JRCs, the Patriots, the St. Mike's Buzzers, and the North York Rangers, and in the East. We've been saying it all week long. It's going to come down to those last couple of regular season games to decide who takes the East between Wellington and the Trenton Golden Ox. The top five brought to you by Cliff Bar, the official energy bar of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Number five, Ben Addison of the Wellington Dukes gives Dante Jones a ride. The textbook, perfect hip check, sends Dante overboard. Number four, the Markham Royals with the gorgeous passing here. Tic-tac-toe, Johnny Ulickney finishing in style. Number three, Colton Incy of Brantford coming up huge against Georgetown with not one, but two monster stops from in close. Number two, Aurora's Blake Frost, the sweet rush against Oakville here. Short-handed, no less, and the awesome finish behind Will Barber. That could have been number one. These two are basically interchangeable. Wellington's Quinn Hanna going end-to-end -end himself, dances past Tyler Bakari and puts it home. Part of a big 7-3 Dukes win on national television in prime time. And it is our Cliff Bar play of the week. And we're all out of time for this week. But just remember, you can always keep up to date with everything going on in the league by heading to ojhl.ca. And of course, all of your social media options are right there for you to explore as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.